The Adventures of Sam Spade, Detective. Since the world began, woman was meant for man. Well, Sam, I must say, this is the shortest honeymoon in my experience. Half of you have been keeping something from me. Well, I wouldn't blame myself if I did. You didn't exactly telegraph this punch. Come on in, Angel, and I'll tell you as much about it as I think you should know. And what, may I ask, is a large parcel with a pink ribbon around it? Love letters. What else? Well, I must say, for a whirlpool romance. Whirlpool? I mean, writing all those letters. When did she find time to get acquainted? Stop pulling at that blouse. What's the matter? Does it itch? Sam, now that your marital status is no longer quo... Well, Sam, these little routine informalities. Don't you think we should be a little more stilted with each other here? In the hereafter? Then, perhaps, and not a minute before. To Sergeant Joseph Walsh, Bunko and Fugitive Detail, San Francisco Police. From uh, you-know-who, license number 137596. Subject, the, uh... Easy, yes. Subject, the, uh, love letter caper, or how to be happily married, though single. The start of it was last Wednesday morning. I had just arisen, shaved, bathed, weighed myself on the bathroom scales, and decided on a breakfast of black coffee and rye crisp. Noisy stuff. Oh. Special delivery. Sign here. Oh, now hold this, will you, Sonny? Yeah, what do you call this? Some kind of Italian soda cracker? Rye crust, low in calories. Take a bite. Oh, you could lose thanks. a pound or two yourself. Mm. There you are. Eat the change. Thanks. I'll smoke it after dinner. The first thing that fell out of the envelope was a photograph. Glamour type. It was inscribed to Sam, body and soul, Ella. The letter was in the same tone of voice. Sam. Sam. Oh, Sam, my darling. Last night was so beautiful, but now my arms are empty and I'm filled with strange fears for the future. Unless I see you soon, I don't know how I can go on living. Come to me tonight, my darling. Wait until the house is dark. Then slip in through the west gate and I'll meet you beside the fountain. If you fail me, I don't know what I'll do. But I know you won't. All, all, all my love forever. Ella. I uh, read it over again, looked longingly at her picture, and shook my memory down. I couldn't even remember ever meeting a girl named Ella, but I did remember that last night was definitely not beautiful. In fact, I had dropped 35 bucks in a blackjack game, not deductible. After I had tested the letter for invisible ink, codes and ciphers, etc., with negative results, I decided it was either A, a crank letter, or B, bait, or C, a camouflage call for help from a damsel in distress. I took another look at said damsel's photograph and decided I would investigate her distress. I then phoned my secretary and told her to look up the night bus schedule to Atherton, the return address on the envelope containing said love letter. It was around 11 in the p.m. and the moon was just clearing the treetops behind the Comstock mansion when I slipped in at the west gate for the instructions in Ella's love letter and took a plant beside the aforementioned fountain. The house was in darkness, and I didn't see the ladder until the moon cleared the chimney pot. There was a girl climbing down the ladder from the second story, and she had a suitcase in her hand. When she reached the ground, she looked around anxiously, spotted me, and flew into my arms. Sam! Oh, Sam, my darling, you didn't fail me. Oh, my precious, hold me. Never let me go. I love you. I love you, too, but now look. I'll explain it all later. We'll have to hurry. I think he suspected something. Who suspected Please, what? Please, there isn't time. Come on. Oh, the hey. watchman. We'll have to go out the back way. Come on. Hey, there. Come back here. Hey, you! Hey, hold it. Get down. No, let me go. we got to get out of I here. I said get down. No. Shut up. Riley, right, what's going on down there? Oh, a couple of problems, Mr. Comstock. They had a ladder up to the second story in the hall window. But I scared them off. Oh, is that all? Well, let's have no more shooting. I'm trying to scream. Yeah, yeah. Come on. It's our last chance. If you looked in that room, I love you. I love you. What room? Wait. Well, my room, of course. 
Where are you planning on going? Anywhere, just so I get away from him. I love you. I love you. Who's him? My uncle. He's been holding me prisoner in that house. Oh, come now. I tell you, he's insane. He'll kill us both if we're caught, so please come on. I went because, A, I don't like being shot at, and, B, there was a wild possibility that she was indeed a fairy princess on the lamb from a dragon. I discounted half a B when we reached her getaway car. It was parked in the alley with a motor running. When she insisted that I drive, I hesitated whether to head directly to police headquarters or nail her the stupid way. I was weak from being on a diet, so it was Hobson's choice, more familiarly known as Spade's Folly. What is this place? It's where I live. You wouldn't lie to me. Not about that. Look at the address. Your love letter arrived here. Come on. Here, let me carry your bag. No, no, it's all right. I'll carry it. Hmm. Come on, come on. It's okay. No cops, no booby traps. Now, let's have a look in that suitcase. No, you must Come on, I... come on. Give it to me. Oh, no, you can't. Why not? Because you'll get the wrong idea. Oh. Well, well, well. What have we here? I knew you'd get the wrong idea. The only thing you seem to have missed is the Hope Diamond. That jewelry is mine, every piece of it. Uh-huh. It's all I have in the world. Poor kid. Let's see now. Diamond bracelet, not more than ten grand. Emerald necklace, second hand, of course. All told, I don't imagine this stuff will net you a penny more than a hundred thousand bucks. I know, but I'll just have to get along as best I can. I don't have any money of my own. Yeah, why did you write me that crazy love letter? Because my uncle reads all my mail. I didn't want him to know I was hiring a detective. Why did you? I couldn't very well walk around with all these jewels without some protection, could I? Oh, my uncle, he followed me here. Suppose it's the cop. Oh, no, it's he. I know it. Where can I hide? In here? Don't you have a bedroom? Yeah, but it has a window and a fire escape in here. Uh, go on. But, but go I... on, go on. Spade. Yeah. I... I suppose she's told you about me. You were uncle? Oh, good heavens, no. I'm Stuart Mason. I'm a fiancé. Or was, till she ran away with you. Uh, maybe you'd better step inside, Mr. Mason. Thank you. Uh, sit down. I'd uh, like to... Explain. No, 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 no. I just brought a few things I'd like to leave for Ella. Here. This bundle of letters. Her uh, love letters to me. I suppose she'll want to destroy them. <clears throat> now, wait a minute, Mr. Mason. Don't jump to any rash conclusions. I saw her come down the ladder. I saw her throw herself into your arms. Yeah, but... I I can't blame her. I've been a coward. I oh. told myself it was for her own sake that I discouraged her from escaping with me. But now I know that, well, it was at least partly fear for myself. But I might die as the others did. Yeah, but, uh, what others? The men she's known. They've all died under mysterious circumstances, and didn't she warn you? Well, uh, all she told me was that her uncle was insane and wouldn't let her out. <laughs> Crazy like a fox. As long as she remains unmarried, he controls her money. Three million dollars of it. Uh-huh. Well, only the brave deserve the fare. Alas. If you'll just give her these letters and tell her that I... You, uh, tell her yourself. Come on out, Ella. Stuart, why did you come here? Your letters, my dear. And I... I wish you every happiness. Stuart. You too, old man. Good night. Oh, Stuart, Stuart, darling, I can explain everything. Don't try, my dear. Oh, Stuart! Stuart, come back! Hey, Ella! Hey, Ella, your jewelry! Your, your love letters! Hey, we'll take care of those letters, Spade. Keep the gun on him, Riley. Inside, you. Over there, sweetheart. What do you want? Mr. Spade, I've been aware for some time that you've been carrying on a surreptitious love affair with my niece. Look, uh, Mr. Comstock. What, Jim Riley? Don't worry, Mr. Comstock. I advise you against trying to jump him, Spade. Why should I? You're both nuts, but not crazy enough to take a shot at me here. Try me and see. I wouldn't waste the energy. I haven't made a penny on this caper so far, and it doesn't look like I will. Ha! Not a penny, he says. The king's ransom and jewels extorted from a foolish, lovesick girl. Oh, how did I manage that? Don't you play the innocent with me. This packet of love letters will satisfy the police. Blackmail. You're crazy. Those letters weren't written to me. You deny that Ella has ever written your letter? One too many. In fact, one. Well, how do you explain me? Darling Sam. Sam, my dearest one. What? Sam, my great, big, beautiful detective. Dated last October. Hey, let me see those Watch things. It. 
I told you not to move. Yeah, yeah, so you did. Well, uh, what now? Very well. Give me the... Give me the police department. Yes, it is. Hello? This is Hugo Comstock. I want to make a complaint. Uh, blackmail. Oh. Hello. I want to... Uh, yes, yes, Sergeant. The name is Hugo Comstock, and I'm making this complaint on the behalf of my niece, Miss Ella Comstock. The name of the offender is Samuel Spade, a private detective. Huh? Well, of course I'm sure. Yes, I'm holding him at his apartment now. The address is... Uh, Oh, you have it. Well, I'm not surprised. You better hurry over here. Right away. He's threatening violence. You really think you can make that stick? Mr. Spade, I'm sure I can. Dirty words and foul imprecations were forming on my trembling lips. But he had letters from his niece to one Sam, a great, big, beautiful detective. And I had the jewels. And before the night was over, Sergeant Walsh, you had me. Booked, bothered, and bewildered. What bewildered me was how to raise the $2,500 bail. Sam Spade, innocent dope. I mean dupe. The United States Armed Forces Radio Service is presenting the weekly adventure of Dashiell Hammett's famous private detective, Sam Spade. Up the times into my breakfast of rude prison fare. They didn't serve any rye crisp, but what they did serve was even less fattening. I thrust my emaciated arms through the bars of my cell and clawed at the lapels of a passing bondsman and begged him for sucker. He says I didn't need any because I was it. I hurled him aside and sat down to think. About then, you, Sergeant Walsh, hold still in front of my cell. Okay, Sam, get moving. You're free. Gee, thanks. Who stood my bail? Great kidder, aren't you? Sergeant, am I to understand that the charges have been dropped? Get out of here. All right, I know when I'm not wanted. Mine not the reason why. And don't come back. Your inhospitable words cut me to the quick, Sergeant, but I bit my lips, swallowed my pride, very low calorie, and strode bravely out into the sunlight, a free man. I fought until I bought a newspaper. Right there on page one, it said, Heiress reveals secret marriage to private detective. Blackmail charges against Sam Spade dropped. All a mistake, says Uncle. Next to the item was a picture of Ella leaning over a hot stove in my kitchen. It was captioned, Surprise bride prepares breakfast for incarcerated mate. We'll keep things hot for him, says Mrs. Spade. Sam, darling, your breakfast is ready. I'm on a diet. Take off that apron and sit down. I did it for your sake, Sam, darling. Wouldn't it have been simpler just to have dropped the charges? Oh, it wasn't difficult. The nicest man forged the license and the certificate for only $10. I know a guy who would have done it for five and thrown in some fingerprints for free, but that's not the point. But, darling, don't you see? If you'd just gone free without being married to me, Uncle Hugo might have done something worse to you. Like kill you. Nuts. Who are these exit admirers of yours who are supposed to have been knocked off by your uncle? Name three. Well, there was Ralph Bettinson. He died of vapor loss. Of what? It happened in the mountains. Something went wrong with his car, but they couldn't prove it because it blew up and burned after it went over the cliff. Hmm. And then there was poor Freddie Push. They called him the piggy bank suicide. Why? They found five dollars worth of pennies in his stomach. Oh. And then there was poor Nicky Notto. He was a ballet dancer. That's and... enough. Now about those letters. Why was your friend Mason returning love letters you'd written to some detective named Sam? Well, that was just coincidence. He always went by his initials, you know, like GBS for George Bernard Shaw, SAM is for Stuart Andrew Mason. Stuart Andrew is his pen name. He writes detective stories. And the rest of the coincidence was the, that love letter you inadvertently mailed to Sam Spay Detective, thereby sending your uncle out gunning for Sam instead of S-A-M? What could I do after he read my diary and my confessions to myself about S-A-M and the references to his brilliant mind on criminal subjects? Well, you were a natural stand-in for S-A-M. Pronounced S-A-P. Oh, but I wasn't going through with it, Sam. Not after I met you. Why not? Because the moment I saw you, I, I knew that all those things I'd said in that love letter were really true. Really? Last night was so beautiful. Oh, I think I... I think I must have dreamed of you. Did you? Oh, Sam, darling, I, I'm so lost and frightened. Give me. You don't know what my life has been. Oh, I can imagine. Boyfriend's dropping dead right and left. You're the only one who can stop it. If Uncle Hugo thinks we're really married and he can't use my money anymore, then he'll stop having accidents happen to people. Won't you please be my husband, Sam? 
Is that so much to ask? After what I did for you? Yeah. Oh, go on. You spring me out of that blackmail frame so I can help you compound a felony. But, Sam, what am I going to do? You forge the marriage, go forge a divorce. <laughs> Where are you going? Back to jail. I'll see you there. Ow! Oh! Oh, dear me. Hit your foot, did it? Cast iron. Don't make them like that nowadays. My foot. Eh? Your foot. I meant the strong box. Oh. Oops. Uh, coming in or going out? I think I'll sit down for a minute. Sam, you poor dear boy. Here, let me take off your shoes so it can swell if it wants to. Get away from me. I only wanted to help. I love you. Well, I don't love you anymore. Oh, ho, ho. first little spat, is it? Who is this guy? Oh, Sam, I'm sorry. This is Curtin. You can say that again. Curtin's. Harwood L. Curtin's. L. for Lacey, attorney at law. I represent the estate of the late Gertrude Comstock, Ella's mother. Uh, you, Mr. Spade... Have married into, uh, shall we say, money? Look, Curtis, it's time to raise the blinds on a couple of things. In the first place... Please. As you know, Ella, your grandfather, the late Commodore Ezra Comstock, uh, left his fortune to be divided equally between his legitimate heirs, that is, your mother and your uncle Hugo. Upon your mother's death, the residue of her part of the estate was left to be administered by your uncle Hugo as he saw fit until your marriage at which time it should go to you. Well, where is it? Yeah. All in good legal time. First, here is this old strong box. You mean strong box? Ah, containing family mementos handed down to you from your grandmother. <clears throat> it was your mother's wish that this be delivered into your hands upon this uh, auspicious occasion. <clears throat> here is the key, in addition to which... I leave with you both my best wishes for your future happiness. Good day. Uh, Mr. Spade, I shall forward along to you the statement of my fees for services in this case. Wait a minute. Who's paying my fees? No more questions, please. Good day. Well, I guess we might as well open it. Oh, I'm sleepy. Oh, no. Let's see what's in here. All right. Let's. It didn't take long to go through Grandma Comstock's mementos, and I got more and more wide awake as we went along. The strong box contained four items, a teapot, a bundle of letters, a photograph album, and a family skeleton. The letters were love letters from one Elmo Pinckney. There was a tin type that said Pinckney in the album. He was a dead ringer for Uncle Hugo, which might have been a coincidence, but wasn't. I started scanning through the love letter. Find any money yet? Huh? Well, there's a Confederate 10 spot. I'll let you know if I hit any pay dirt. Well, at least she left me a pot to make tea in. What? But if there wasn't any money, why wouldn't Uncle Hugo let me get married? Now, look, why don't you go and wash out that pot and make some tea, huh? Probably leave. Oh, something in it. Hmm? No money. This grandmother's marriage certificate and the mother's and Uncle Hugo's birth certificate. Let's see those. Oh, crap. I might have known. I wonder who that is. That will be your Uncle Hugo. Well, that doesn't need to worry us anymore, does it? Yeah, put these things back in the teapot and put the teapot on the mantelpiece. But it's cracked. So am I, so do it anyway. Come right in, Uncle Hugo. You too, Cousin Riley, you fool. Very funny. Now, now, don't be silly, Riley. Ella, accept your poor old uncle's blessing on this happy occasion. I don't want your blessing, Uncle Hugo. You're a mean old man, and you killed all my fiancés. Well, it appears that Mr. Curtins has already brought you a legacy. I believe I recognize your grandmother's strong box. Mementos of a strange romantic chapter in the history of a great family, Mr. Spade. You, who have joined that family so uh, unexpectedly, will have a privilege that even I was never granted. Oh, how come? My mother was a strange woman in some ways. I'm sure she was. I suppose we shall never know what prompted her to leave these personal allotments to Ella's mother, nor why my late sister chose to keep their contents a secret from me. I... <laughs> I don't suppose I might be allowed to just a peek into that Pandora's box. Go ahead. Help yourself. Really? Well, well uh, <laughs> there's nothing but a photograph album and a bundle of letters. Love letters, Uncle Hugo. They seem to run in your family. Would you like to read them? You, uh, you have no objection, Ella. Me? Why should she have? And I can give the whole story to you in a nutshell, Uncle Hugo. It seems that Grandma Comstock fell in love with a handsome rascal named Pinckney, a deserter from the Confederate Army, and eloped with him to New Orleans. Her family pursued her there, had Pinckney arrested, got an annulment, and whisked her back home in time for her scheduled wedding to Ezra Comstock. These letters were written to her by Pinckney while he languished in prison awaiting court-martial. 
Here's the last one. Wait it for yourself. Oh. Lydia, my darling, in a few hours I face a firing squad. Please, no tears, no regrets. I'm glad that you are married to a man who is worthy of you. Comstock will be a better father for our child than I would ever have been. Farewell, my love. Huh. So that was a secret. Nothing so extraordinary about that. I think it's very tragic. Think of her married to a man she didn't love about to have a child. And her lover facing a firing squad. Nonsense. Sentimental nonsense. Well, what do you know about such things? I should know a little. After all, I was that child. Oh, I'm sorry, Uncle Hugo. I... Ah, wow. Fine old piece of spoon. What? This teapot. I don't remember seeing this here before. Uh, just something I picked up in a junk shop. Uh, it was a very rare piece. Do you mind if I look at the mark? Go ahead. Ah, indeed. Genuine example. Pity it's cracked. Oh, oh. Now, that was clumsy of me. Well, there's no good saving the pieces. I'll just toss them in the fire. Wait a minute, Comstock. I'll take care of it. Oh, it's no trouble. Well, well, what's this? It's uh, your birth certificate, Uncle Hugo. Give me that. Oh, no. What are you going to do with it? Put it back where it came from. Righty. Yeah, Mr. Comstock. Spade, I'm going out of here, and I'm taking that strong box with me. And don't think I won't kill you to get it. He will, Sam, just as he did the other. And you, too, if you don't shut your trap. Hand it over, Spade. Sure. Come and get it. Okay, let's have it. There you are. Oh! Riley, what's wrong with you? Oh, my foot is broken. Oh! Sit down and rest it. Oh. Oh. Hold it, Comstock. I've got the gun now. Oh. Well, Spade, oh. seems you've won the day. Oh. How does it feel to be a rich man? You'll have to tell me, Comstock. The reports of my marriage to your niece are slightly exaggerated. And that's about it, Sergeant. I'm sorry I can't furnish you with the forged papers Ella used to back up that phony story of her marriage to me. A fire broke out in the wastebasket, and I accidentally dropped them into it. As for Comstock and his guns, O'Reilly, I will gladly press charges against them on the blackmail frame until Homicide decides whether there's a case against him on the mysterious deaths of Ella's previous fiancés. Period. End of report. But, Sam, why? Why what, if? Did he want that old cracked teapot? Well, because Grandmother's love letters plus the documents on that teapot prove that Hugo was not a Comstock but a Pinckney and hence not entitled to one red penny of the Comstock fortune, which was left, if you recall, to Grandpa's legitimate heir. Well, who was? Entitled, I mean. Ella, but if she never married, she'd never find out, you But she doesn't deserve it. Hmm? After making a pigeon out of you the way she did. I agree, sweetheart, but how else could she afford to pay my fee? Well, I certainly hope you soak her. I fully intend to. Go type that up while I falsify an expense account. No, still a couple of fingers in there. Break out another glass. Oh, no, I meant the extent of time. Oh, that. Well, it was nothing much. Just bus fare. Uh, free breakfast in the pokey? Nah, no, that would be the sign. Well, I took the liberty, Sam, of drawing up a statement. Will you look it over? Yeah. Hmm. New letterhead. Well, it's only a sample I had, dummy. Up? Sending your approval. Do you? Well, uh, yes, yes, very classy. I like the coat of arms, but I'm not quite sure about the motto. Oh, but then you are the greatest private detective of them all. Well, you know best, Effie. And then, for an extra dollar a hundred, we could have it printed in Rady Ink. In what? Luminous Ink, Sam. Shines in the dark. Even as you and I. Oh, Sam. I'm glad you're still a bachelor. Go home, all the same. <laughs> Good night, Sam. <laughs> Good night, sweetheart. <laughs> The Adventures of Sam Spade. Dashiell Hammett's famous private detective are produced and directed by William Spear. Sam Spade is played by Howard Duff. Lorene Tuttle is Effie. Adventures of Sam Spade, Private Detective, is a presentation of the United States Armed Forces Radio Service, the voice of information and education. <laughs>